Hey, what's up makers? April Dunham here. In this Thursday quick tip video, I want to share with you some new features that were released for the Power Automate application for Teams. If you've never used the Power Automate app in Teams or if you just haven't used it lately, there's definitely some new features that you want to check out. I'll walk you through how to install that in Teams and some of the new features coming up. All right, let's start with how do we get this Power Automate app installed for Teams? First, you're going to open up Microsoft Teams, and this can be either the browser version or the desktop version. And you're going to click these three dots in the left rail, and you want to use the Find an App search box and search for Power Automate. Now, if it doesn't show up in Power Automate, that might mean that the name hasn't changed in your tenant. This actually did happen to me in my dev tenant. So if you do a search for flow, it might still show up under that. So you'll click to install that and that's going to add that in here as a personal application once you click the add button. I've already went and installed it so that's why it shows open in my case. Now if I open this, it's going to take me to a fully functional version of Power Automate with inside of Microsoft Teams. So if you haven't used this before and this is completely new, we can do things like see all of our flows. We can either create new flows directly in here. We have access to our approval history. And if you have used this before, you might notice that it looks a bit different. So what are the major things that changed? Well, first thing you'll notice is on this home screen, we're getting a listing of all of the flows that we've created that are Teams-based flows. So you see up here in the upper right-hand corner, we have a dropdown. So it's going to automatically filter your flows in here for any flows related to Teams. Now, of course, we can change this using the dropdown to all flows, and it's going to show everything. So we can use this application within Teams to edit and create any type of flow, not just Teams flows. But they really made it much easier for if you're using this and wanting to access quickly your Teams-based flows to do that with that filter. And one of the other things you might have noticed is now the branding of this really matches the Teams UI. So the toggles are that Teams purple that you would expect, and the background's the same color. So they really made some efforts there to make it feel more like a native Teams application. So I can go into any one of these flows that I've already created, for example, click into that, and I can see all of the flow details. So I would be able to see my run history here, when it was created, what connections it's using and I can edit this flow directly within this application within Teams. One of the other cool things that they've added is here on the Create tab. If you want to create new flows from Teams here, they've made that even easier. So you see again, we have that dropdown where it's filtering to show Power Automate templates specifically for Teams. And just like on your homepage, you can switch this to see all templates as well. And they've highlighted, I think there's about 50 right now, different templates that are Teams related in here for you to get started automating business processes within Teams quickly. So for example, a common one here that you might see is to get a notification when a forms response is submitted within Teams. So that's a template that we can use here. And you'll notice if you've used this before that the interface for creating these flows within the Power Automate app for Teams is different as well. So first thing it's going to have us do is give our flow a name. And it's just letting us know that's using forms and Microsoft Teams as the connectors. So we'll click continue. And we have a new and improved interface for configuring these flows. So directly from here, we can just use the drop downs to select our form. So I'll select event registration. Then we have a simple drop down to select the team that we want to post in. So I might post this to my marketing team. And then that's going to populate the drop down below to select the channel that you want to post this in within the team. So I really love this new and improved interface. And if you do need to do some more advanced things, we always have the option here to go to edit mode. So if you click this edit and edit mode, this will take you to the traditional full fledged flow editor that we're used to. So you can see what's happening behind the scenes. It's just using a trigger of when a form response is submitted and then posting an adaptive cart. Let's go back to that new and improved screen. So I have my form, my team, and my channel. So let's click create. Now that's all I had to do for that template. So if we click done, if we go back to the home page now, we'll see our new flow right there and that's turned on. So now let's just do a test. I'll fill out our event registration form. Click 
click Submit. This is going to kick off our brand new flow that we easily created from the Power Automate app in Teams. So to see if it's working, I can click on the flow. And here's that page with the run history so I can see it did succeed. And of course I can click into that and be taken to the edit screen where I can make sure that each action succeeded and see all the details there. Now if I go to my Teams tab and Marketing, you see it posted an adaptive card that there was an update from Microsoft Forms and I can click View Response and that will take me to Microsoft Forms. Another template that I found really useful is here if you click on the Calendar option, this is going to filter the different Teams templates based off of if they involve some kind of calendar action, right? So same for all of these. There's different ones for productivity, data collection, and email. But this one is using a newer trigger for Power Automate for a selected message in Teams. So if we take a look at this one, what it's going to do is schedule a meeting with a specific sender. So if I click on the template, again, we're going to give it a name, click Continue. The first thing we're going to have it do is select the calendar from our calendars that we want to use to schedule the meeting on. So I'll select my default calendar here and then select the time zone. So I'll select I am in Central Standard Time. And if we click Create, how this is going to work, so let's click Done. And again, let's confirm that it shows up here in our list of flows on the Home tab. There it is. So to use this one, if I am in a chat here, say with David, and I know I wanted to, maybe he sent me a message, hey, why don't we schedule a one-on-one? -on -one? We haven't talked in a while. Well, rather than having to go open up my calendar and manually schedule that, I could do this directly from the chat with that flow we just created. So if we hover over a specific message in a chat, you can see these three dots that show up. If we click that, you'll see an option for more actions. And you notice when I click more actions, we have an option for schedule one-on-one. -on -one. Well, that's what I just named that flow. So what that flow just did is enabled us to create a custom action for Teams. So if I click on that now, it's actually popping up an adaptive card for me to fill in some more information. So I can put in the meeting subject, some details, and then right in line, I can select the day and the time that I want to meet. See, so I can meet Friday, and then we have a picker for the time, and click Submit. And this is actually going to go out to my calendar, and it's going to set up that meeting. So if I go back to the home page and let's click on the flow, so I see that flow succeeded, which is great. So if we click on that, we see just by filling out a few properties there using that template, all of this was going on behind the scenes. So this is that trigger I was talking about for selected message. So this is what enables us to get those three dots so that we can perform an action for a message. So I can see this was triggered successfully and this is all the information that it got from the selected message. So I can see who initiated this, who it was from. I can see the body of the message and the card outputs. You can see it has a few variables here for the meeting start times and all of that. And then it's using the Office 365 Users Connector to get the profile information for a user. And then finally, it's actually going out and creating a Teams meeting. So there's an action in Power Automate that will enable you to create a Teams meeting. So it's filling in the Teams meeting information with the information that I put in in that adaptive card. Pretty cool, right? And now if I click here on my calendar and scroll down, there you go, at 1.30 on Friday, there is my one-on-one. -on -one. And just to prove it set up the Teams meeting correctly, we see the link to join the meeting. Another one that I found really helpful is here under the Productivity section, and that's this template to follow up on a message. So I don't know about you, but I'm often bombarded with different Teams messages, and we're all busy these days with meetings upon meetings, so it can be easy to forget about a message. So this particular template is going to give you the ability to really flag a particular Teams message and remind you to follow up on that at a later time. So for this, let's click Continue and see how easy it is to set this up and how it works. So we're going to click Create Flow. That's really all we have to do. There's no other inputs required. This is going to be another one of those custom action buttons. So if I go into a Teams channel, for example, and I see this message about a new audit being submitted, and maybe I wanted to make sure that I follow up on that and remember to actually do this audit. If I click those three dots again, like we did before with that last flow template, 
and go to more actions, you'll see now that that follow up on a message option appears. So now if we click that, this is going to give us an adaptive card and ask us when we want to be reminded. So it gives us a few increments out of the box. We can go from 20 minutes all the way up to in a week. So maybe I'm busy today, but I want to remember to follow up on this tomorrow. So I can select a tomorrow option and submit. And that's going to pause for a day. And then it's going to send me a message in Teams, letting me know and reminding me to follow up on this. And let's see how the back end of this flow is working. If we go click on the dots and click edit, we'll see that this is another for selected message trigger. It's going to set the delay action to whatever interval we selected from the adaptive card. Then it's going to post an adaptive card as the flow bot to a user. That leads me into the next piece of this flow app. If we look at the top, we have a tab for chat. Any messages that you get from the flow bot are going to show here. We have this great built in bot for Power Automate that allows us to communicate with users with inside of Teams. That's called the Flowbot. So anything that the Flowbot posts to you is going to show up here in the chat tab. The other thing that this Power Automate app for Teams includes is the approval center. So that's what's here in this approvals tab. So if you quickly want to see all the pending approvals that you have either received or you sent, you have this nice one-stop shop with inside the Power Automate app in Teams. So I hope this inspired you to install the Power Automate app in your Teams environment and hopefully gave you some ideas of all of the possibilities there are to automate things within Teams with Power Automate. If you found this helpful, please like, subscribe, share, and I'll catch you in the next video.